Welcome to season 22 of the Prep Pigs Can Report. My name is Rudy and I'll be your host, but I do not work alone. Say hello to Mr. Bert Grossman. Bert, do you yes. have any opening words of wisdom, please? I just noticed so we have Joe Hines, Tony Saragusa, and David Dunn on this show. Not exactly a new season cast of The Bachelor, but, <laughs> but, but very entertaining, the three. Well, you, yeah, I agree. And you mentioned Coach Dunn. It's now time to turn it over. There's quite the buzz coming from the hive, and there he is. Looking like Father Time himself, <laughs> the head of the hive, Coach David Dunn. Coach, how you doing? Hey, just trying to stay positive and test negative. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Coach, the word on the street is Lincoln is loaded with talent. Uh, could you talk to that a little bit? How, how you know, your, your preseason favorites to be really, really good? Well, with the way things have been going on now, um, you know, I, I can't really get a good gauge on that. You know, with the uh, everything, the COVID and the pandemic going on, having not not able to have a chance to actually meet with our guys and fully um, meet with the full group. So, um, it's still it's still time to tell. You know, it's, I think a lot of things have been blown up um, a little bit too much on social media. Coach, love the Raiders shower curtain in the back. It's a good touch. Hey, hey, man. Hey, my kids hooked me up my little Raider room here. All right, Paul has loaded. I'm going to ask you how you got so loaded. There's some talk that Lincoln might have rechartered into a Catholic school now. That's how you're getting all these guys. Is that true? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've been I've been hearing and seeing so much come through social media. Um, I think the difference is, I mean, Lincoln, we, we average about – anywhere from six to eight transfers on a yearly basis. Um, but it's with the emergence of social media and Twitter and, you know, everyone wants to be, um, everyone wants to have a podcast. Everyone wants to have a voice out there and social media is giving them that voice. And I mean, I hear about so many transfers coming to Lincoln. I mean, I'm hearing, I mean, I got guys from different States. I got kids from, you know, professional players and everyone is trying to get back and get some eligibility at Lincoln High School. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we put up a list of names that may or may not be coming your way, but on a topic that's far more serious, Coach, you've been very mm -hmm. open about talking about dealing with depression and, and, the, and the repercussions from that. Why have you chosen to be so public? Um, it's definitely something to deal with. I mean, I, know, I don't know if Burke can attest to this or anything, but, you know, when you when you – when you're going through different things in your life and, you know, the big change from coming after football and all the adjustments that you have to make that you maybe were not prepared for, um, you know, and just sometimes life itself, you know, so I know I found myself in some really dark places and, um, you know, it was a point in time in my life when I didn't think that I would really, um, I didn't think I would live to, to be 45 years old or 40, you know, and so I just really went through a lot, um, you know, losing things and, and, and just not being able to to kind of find my focus. And, you know, football helped me do that, not by playing it, but actually coming back and, and getting involved with these kids and stuff like that. So I, I have my own personal battles with, with um, you know, with depression and anxiety. And it led, of course, some weight gain and some different things. And, you know, depression is real. You know, before I used to look at it as, you know, some people may have, you know, view it as an excuse or pick why people down in the dumps and, feel in certain ways, but, you know, I found myself at some very low points and just been able to talk about it and come out and be honest about it and try to just find the best way to get, make myself a better me. And coach, along the way, you have, you have taught kids and mentored kids and have made such a positive impact and it's such a positive educational experience over at Lincoln High. What you've created there, coach, is the envy of a lot of, uh, a lot of coaches. So we congratulate you on that. And I appreciate the fact that you always make time for the PPR. That that is very cool of you, Coach. No, oh, no, no, no problem at all. You know, it's all about giving back to the community, and um, and mainly just giving back to these kids. You know, I, I was a young man who didn't take academic academic seriously, and you know, the experience that we're having, the kids are having at Lincoln High School is they're believing in themselves. You know, because everyone, everyone, when they say, oh, you know. No, we, we can't go to Lincoln High School. Our parents said we can't go there. Lincoln is not an option. And that's always what I hear a lot from the kids in our community. And 
you know, what we're doing here is we're getting kids to believe in themselves. You sure you know, are, we're Coach. We're really creating a true, a true student athlete. Um, I'm just so proud of the kids. You know, 26 seniors last year, 24 of them um, got accepted into four-year university. And I'm proud of those numbers, whether it's scholarship or football or not. To have 24 out of 26 kids um, go off to college um, from an inner city school who no one expects them us to really produce kids like that, you know, that's what I'm talking about. It's way bigger than uh, a, a championship. I'm just about building champions. Coach, we're going to have to call it a conversation right there. Thank you very much for making time for us. That's David Dunn from Lincoln High, everybody. Working on this show for 22 years, we've seen quite a few kids and coaches make it all the way to the NFL. We have a segment called, What Does It Take to Make It All the Way? Here's Nick James. I mean, starting in Southeast San Diego, um, you know, then, you know, playing, being able to play quarterback at a young age, uh, fell in love with the position, fell in love with the sport. Um, you know, coming out of, um, you know, Skyline Morris area, um, you know, had to stay focused, you know. Obviously, there's a lot of distractions growing up in that neighborhood. Um, but obviously, I, I was well raised by, you know, by my two parents, by my parents. Um, and so, you know, I was able to, you know, stay, stay focused, stay on that path, you know, did well in school, did well in sports, um, you know, got some opportunities, you know, you know, to go to Northridge, you know, got an opportunity to go to the next level. You know, I signed with the Green Bay Packers as a free agent, went into training camp there, um, learned a lot, didn't make the team, but then went up north and played in Canada. Um, and that was a great experience. You know, I love my time in Canada, uh, learned a lot uh, about football, um, you know, obviously, you know, just growing up, at, you know, as a young man, um, the experiences that, you know, it it offered me, um, you know, meeting new people, you know, being in a different country, um, different game of football, but similar, you know, similar to the NFL, but a little bit different um, learning that. But I mean, it was a great experience, you know, played seven years up there, then got right into coaching, um, retired early. That's Nick James, everybody. Yes. Time now for our first break. Maddie C. at Sinclair and Braden Stone are up next. You're watching the Prep Pigskin Report. East Lake devoting the entire season to number 33, Dean Clazer. They're running back recovering from cancer. Can he find a, recept a receiver? He does. Caleb, do it! Look at this! I want you to talk about how he's been an inspiration tonight. He's been an inspiration because he goes to every practice, practices hard, he does as much as he can with us, and he motivates the team to play better and to play our full potential. Welcome back to the Pre Pigskin Report. That's right, Bert. This is our 22nd year of the PPR, and during that time, we've seen some very memorable moments. That's right, you just saw one of them. Brandon Stone has seen his share of those memorable moments, and in conjunction with segment sponsor, King Amanpour. Brandon goes digging for silver. You know, you'd never know what you'll find when you're looking through the archives. Ah, wait a minute. Like this, you know, a lot of kids have worked really hard for the chance to win this silver trophy. But there's another silver trophy that just a select few of our kids have had a chance to compete for, and that's what we're talking about in this week's King Digging for Silver. Williams makes a cut. If not for that $500 million quarterback, Damian Williams probably should have been the Super Bowl MVP. Not the first time he's come up big. Uh, did I mention I always mentioned Damian Williams' name? Warner got it for San Francisco. Fred Warner, not too shabby for the 49ers in the Super Bowl as well, but he's been doing that since his days at Mission Hills. Fred Warner, we saw this before in the first game of the season. Corey Littleton, he had an interception for the Rams in Super Bowl 53. Picked off on his first throw. Not the first time he's been the center of attention. Uh, we're inside the classroom, hitting it, uh, game preparations. And then good old Reginald Bush, the 2001 winner and Super Bowl champion with New Orleans, doing Reggie Bush things. This simple burst around in shows Reggie Bush's pure speed. Four great players, but only one can win. Let's look back at this performance by Reggie Bush. But by the time Bush gets to the end zone, 43 yards later, it becomes a typical Reggie Bush work of art. Go off what my offensive line gives me. They give me a lot of great blocks and they give me a lot of good looks. Oh, that's, that's a way, way back, 21 years, 22 years. Hey, the uh, Prep Picks Report has always been more than a highlight show. It's part of our, anything that's part of the high school football experience is part of the PPR. So let's go to Madison Sinclair with this week's Squad Up. 
the San Marcos cheer team. Let's get fired up. For some, Friday nights under the lights is more than just a game. I've been trained for 12 years, so it's like the only thing I know. I've had APs come up to me and just be like, you guys are just, make the school just so much happier. That's the reason I do cheer is to feel that, that rush of emotion. Just, it makes you so incredibly happy. And between football and the crowd, we're the link. If we're hyped up and we're all excited, then the crowd's gonna be excited. And then that's gonna excite the football players. You'll even see some of the guys on the sidelines, or at least I have kind of like, going along with like whatever cheer we're doing. So it's really nice to see them. They are pretty supportive. It's not only just being that spirit leader on the field, it's off of it too. It's leading by that good example. Even when facing a pandemic, these knights still figure out a way to lead by example. We delivered a flower and a note to some healthcare providers around our community, just saying thank you for everything that you've done because they work very hard to keep all of us safe right now. And while we all wait for the start of prep football, these knights do what they do best, keep the spirits high. You know, keep your heads up. We've already come so far and things are like starting to look up. Get everything done now so that when the season comes around in January, I mean, you're just, you're gonna be at your best. So as long as we just keep staying positive about it all and staying safe and six feet apart, I feel like we'll definitely be able to go back and have that great experience that we're all missing so much. That was Maddie Sinclair, everybody. Bo Furtag is keeping us up to date with the ever-changing rosters in San Diego County. There are big changes at Christian High School. Yes, there are, with both Matt Oliver and Dave Beezer calling it quits after long careers there. Here's Bo Furtag. All great relationships have a common ground, but what brought Matt Oliver and David Beezer together? The competitiveness. Like We both absolutely love to compete. That was evident the first time we sat down and, and met what kept you guys coaching for so long? I liked coaching at Christian High. It was, it was great families there. It was great administration. We'd fill up those stands, and it was just a fun atmosphere to be around. I loved the game, and I loved teaching the game of football. That was probably what kept me doing it, love for the game and the love for the coaches that we had. Some of the best memories at Christian for you guys? kids that were in our program having all of them having a great high school football experience relationships when you win a championship game and the hugs and the i love yous those memories of those championship game nights i'm not sure there's much else that rivals that when you're together for 25 years there's bound to be some disagreements i wanted to take the points you know early and kick the field goal he's like no we gotta go we gotta go we went for it we got it ended up winning that game so it's a great memory the second part of that story is we had a little bit of time left on that timeout, so I went sprinting out to the huddle, and I was like, we better get these two yards or I'm a dead man. <laughs> Bo Furtag reporting. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier tonight, we had a conversation with CIF Commissioner Joe Hines. We were talking about the equity issues of having some districts be able to have their off-season workouts, others not. Yeah, and I don't get it again because the guidelines aren't really set you know, statewide, it changes from county to county. It's not a Title IX issue, but it almost falls under that. You have to give everybody the exact same. Um, well, a football team could be practicing in the cross, or you can't let, let the football team practice, but the cross country team can run around the field. Yeah, or football at one school, but not at another. And who took a picture and sent it in and told them, and we're all punished now? Here's Joe Hines. Summer activities and in our rules have to be completely running an outside entity. So that's where you hear AAU, USA Wrestling. That's how people can operate in their in our off season, whether it's in this unique COVID year or or outside years. Um, the big piece again, which draws a lot of questions, even amongst those own schools that are choosing to or schools that are allowing folks to come on in that outside group model, that AAU model is. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the youth and travel world. There's lots of things, that, you know, the majority of our coaches that are working out with their kids are doing the right thing, but there's still some out there potentially, again, um, not following the guidance that's out by the state. Paul, time for another timeout. I'm going to yeah. manage this clock. <laughs> yeah, right. Silver fake skin. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But first, let's check out the PPR Home Life. It's a new home for Crawford. Check out the reconstruction of their stadium coming up next. Can uh, 
be matched by future teams at LCAP. And I mean, just work hard and I mean, put your heart into it. That was Ryan Lindley back in 2006. You know, in, in interest of full transparency, here at the PPR, we're always accused of, well, you pick kids and you don't, you, you know, like we're doing something under the table. Mm -hmm. So this year we've decided we're going to go public and we're going to tell you all the kids that we're thinking about now when it comes time for the next gala, whenever that may be, who's going to be at the gala, who's going to be on the podium. The list is going to grow longer every week. Some kids may fall off it. Some will be added late. But the conversation is started in front of everybody to see. Bert, you're batting leadoff in week two. Who is on your uh, underclassman? Underclassman watch list. I'm going to go with Trey Edwards from modern day. I was fortunate enough to watch Trey play since second grade. Um, he's a ninth grader in these, in these clips, has over 30 Division One offers, and is actually rated the number one recruit for the 2000. 23 national class. All right, fair enough. Let's bring in Brandon Stone. Who are you watching, Brandon? Guys, I've got a nominee for two-way player of the year going to the University of Idaho. 1,500 total yards last year, scored 10 touchdowns, and has one of my favorite nicknames in the entire county, Nico Estrada. I'm adding Noah Sega from El Camino High School to the two-way player of the year watch list. Now you might remember his name from highlights last season on the PPR. Mr. Noah Sega, he goes all the way up. His agility, quick speed, and playing style helped the Wildcats capture a Division II title. Noah Sega could go all the way up in the two-way player of the year category. Nick James, who's on your list? Silver pigskin watch list. I'm rolling with Matthew Lauder, the tight end from Torrey Pines, the Falcons. Yes, he can run, he can catch, but the thing that's very impressive with him is he can block. So I'm going to roll with him. He's going to play with Boise State at the next level. He's already committed to them, and uh, I think he's going to be one of the finalists this upcoming season when the uh, season kicks off here in 2020 in January. Christian Hall looks to become the second Don to win the silver pigskin. The two-star back averaged more than 10 yards per carry and will be a focal point for a team who loves to run the rock. Hall's combination of speed, strength, and toughness make him a great candidate for silver pigskin. My silver pigskin watch list selection for this week is the quarterback from Granite Hills, Justice McComb. He boasts a 3.8 GPA on top of being one of the top five quarterbacks in the San Diego section this year with 26 passing touchdowns and almost 3,000 passing yards. Don't sleep on the man from the East this upcoming season. As the producer for Shaq's pig pen, I'll be adding the first name to our Iron Hog watch list. A three-star defensive end from Westview High, Mandela Tobin has gained offers from Division I schools across the country. It'll be hard to miss this 6'4", 270-pound defensive end on our Iron Hog podium this spring. All right, Nick, those six young people are cutting their broadcast teeth here at the PPR. I think we should add an academic pig. Like the, the best student athlete that plays in high school. Football. That's actually a great idea. You know, in our Mozzie heating, air, and solar cool conversation, we asked a veteran NFL sideline reporter about what it takes to get to the big leagues. I think you know him. Yes, and this is the theme, um, friends that are more successful than I am. Week two, <laughs> Tony Saragusa from The Sopranos, Sports Illustrated, Man Cave, Depends Diapers, you name it. Take a listen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tony, we have a lot of um, high school kids, obviously, there's a high school football show, as well as interns sure. that operate on this. What would you give for advice for guys or girls that want to get and break into broadcasting? I think that, um, you know, f first of all, you know, don't follow what everybody else is doing. Um, I think people come in and they think they got to talk a certain way. Hi, I'm uh, Tony Saragusa. No, just, just be yourself. Um, have strong opinions. Um, uh, you know, be polished on, on what you know. Uh, concentrate on certain things and certain certain players. If you're going to go and do a game, um, you know, try to go and, and look at the highlights and and um, you know, point out things that are exceptional instead of just things that are are very like normal to the to the to the regular person who's watching the game. Um, I think going and and also putting in a little bit of you know, uh, what it, what's the feeling of being at the game? Because I think a lot of people on TV, um, they just take it for granted that people know what, what kind of atmosphere it is or what kind, you know, how the players are feeling or what you see as a whole. And, um, you know, it's a lot like doing radio. You have to be more explicit and, and explain what's happening and, and uh, 
and, and, and the emotions and, you know, if, if it's a turnover, how, you know, one team might be, you know, like not really responding as well as another team. So I think those are probably the best tips I can give a young person who wants to go into broadcasting. We'll play that whole interview later because he was a hoot. He was a hoot. He's, he, I, I was worried in the beginning, but he's a hoot. Yeah, he, pick, he picked up steam. All right, we're going to have more Prep Picks Report Unplugged coming up in just a bit. Welcome back to the PPR Unplugged. Bert, I think it's time to raise a glass of Hollandia real yes. milk. Thank you. Uh, for uh, this week's student athlete win, who's winning on and off the field as well as in the virtual classroom, here's Allison Edmond shining a spotlight on Granite Hills' Justice McComb. For Justice McComb, football is more than just a sport. Football for me, it's just kind of something that I can go do and it's really fun. You have school and it's super stressful and then you have your home life which might be sometimes stressful for certain people and then you have that little outlet that you can go to. And as quarterback, Justice is a leader on the field, but he makes sure he has respect off the field as well. To earn that respect, you have to give them respect. You can't just be that jerk that's yelling at everyone. You have to be able to say that I love you and I'm here for you. And if you need anything, like anything at all, tutoring, anything, I'm here for you type of thing. And that same attitude reflects in the way he approaches school. Since I was five, I always loved learning and making sure that my grades are up. Um, my parents instilled that into me when I was a little kid, you know, say, you better have all A's and B's or you're not playing sports, you know? And I love sports, so I kept all those A's and B's, but over time, you kind of learn to love it. Oh. But perhaps the most inspiring thing about Justice is his inspiration. I was in a dark time with my um, papa at one point, and he was had Parkinson's and passed away from Parkinson's, and he always told me to try my hardest and make sure that I do my best, and he was always there at my games and all that stuff, so that's one thing that pushed me, and then at the same time, um, my Christianity and the people in my church around me, they all help me and make sure that I'm on the right path, and you know, I've always found that extra motivation to not just help myself, but help other people. This is Allison Edmonds for the Prep Pigskin Report. Wow, that was a great story. That piece right there is what the Prep Pigskin Report is all about. Allison Edmonds, that is excellent work, and it kind of encapsulates what we're trying to do here. Let's hand out some PPR gear. Here's Nick Polino with the answer to tonight's Pigskin Trivia, as well as our answer from last week. All right. Thanks, guys. Tonight's Nobody Beats El Cajon Ford pigskin trivia question focuses on Cathedral Catholic. Which one of these Don's running backs is the all-time leading scorer? All you have to do is read the comments. Tyler Gaffney staying humble, but also knowing he's the correct answer. Thanks in part to his magical 2008 senior season when he pushed his all-time totals to over 5,500 career rushing yards and 99 touchdowns. In his Don's career, Gaffney scored a school record of 580 points. Our social media trivia winner is Jaden Leitua. Jaden will be sending you fabulous gear. So remember, PPR and El Cajon Ford, nobody treats you better. Back to the desk. Well done. You have me reading off the wrong teleprompter. I, know, I feel like I Joe know. Biden. Well, you know what? Well, come on. This is a work in progress. I was just thinking about Gaffney, how, how he had... So as great as he was as a football player, he still had the skills to make it as a baseball player as well. He made it to the, up to the highest level. Super athlete. Super athlete? Yeah. Good friend Absolutely. of the show. That sound means the show is over. Don't forget, we replay this extravaganza Saturday nights at 1130. And, of course, to make sure to check out our social media deluge that will begin in about two seconds. Hashtag KUSI PPR. We'll see you next Friday right here on Prep Picks Report Unplugged. Oh, man, go! That's right, score that goal! Home run?